Here's a great quiz question. What's the only US city to look due south down to Canada? You might just want to press pause a moment where you think about that. Cracking question, isn't it? You might be thinking Anchorage or somewhere in Alaska, but the answer is in fact, Detroit. And if like me, you didn't know that and you go to Google to check that I'm not messing you about, then you will see perhaps in related articles that in the 1950s, Detroit was once not just the richest city in America, but the richest city in the world which is amazing, isn't it? It's probably also two things you didn't know about Detroit before uh, today. Now, it's amazing to think that Detroit was once the richest city in the world. Seven years ago, it was declared bankrupt. How the mighty had fallen. And you could say the same about the fifth church in Revelation. Sardis was really famous, had a really famous history. It was set on cliff tops, and on top of that, it was heavily fortified and largely thought to be undefeatable. And because they thought it was impossible for anyone to take the city, that they would always be there, uh, they were taken by surprise when enemies decided under the cover of darkness at night that they would scale the cliffs, and they did take the city. And that happened in 546 BC and again into 14 BC, because we never learn, do we? Christ uh, says to the church in Sardis, starting at verse one of chapter three, I know your deeds, you have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead, wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember therefore, what you have received and heard, hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what time I'll come to you. So this is a church with a reputation for being lively, but now it seems it's just coasting, just going through the motions. It's proud of its heritage, but is not seeking God for where he might be leading them now. It's more concerned with rules and traditions perhaps than expressing the love of Jesus. It's become a club of, of like-minded people. It's a cruise ship where everybody is smoothly gliding along, getting along with each other very nicely and pretty relaxed. It's a cruise ship rather than a battleship. It's busier perhaps with church activities than in serving their community. They see church as a safe place in a constantly changing world rather than a base in which to respond to the challenges of an ever changing world. And perhaps people in the town speak very well of it. Oh, the vicar, she's a lovely woman. Or they run a good youth group or they've got a youth club that's going and a coffee morning. Oh, the coffee morning is great and the biscuits are always so good. And the carol service is lovely and they get involved, they get the children involved in the nativity. We'd hate to see the church close. But yet this lively church is asleep. It looks like a church in some of the things it's doing, but it's lost its cutting edge. It's a church for the insider rather than the, the vagabonds, as the song puts it. As I reflect on Sardis, I think it speaks to many of our churches. In many churches, there will be people who very warmly and very fondly remember the good old days, the size of the congregation, the numbers they used to get in Sunday school, ah, oh, the day trips to the seaside. It's not like the old days. And you know what? They're right, it's not like the old days. Times are different. And so what's the answer? Is it to stick more rigidly to what we've always done and wait for the world to come back and come round to how things were? Or do we have to put away some of our cherished traditions, take a few risks and seek to do a new gospel 
work. Jesus says to this church, remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold on to it fast and repent. Get back to the gospel as your basis for your ministries. Hold it fast and repent of your old ways. Wake up and live again. Let's pray. Father, I pray that as you speak to this church in Sardis, you would speak to us that we might be aware of whether these things apply to us as well. We pray, Lord, for those in church leadership who may become discouraged by comparisons with the past. When times are very different, and perhaps some of those people who have that wonderful memory of good things that happened in the past find it a little bit too difficult to let go of them whereas if they did maybe they would see some of that wonderful gospel growth that caused the church to flourish in the first place lord for churches with a great reputation in the past may they see even greater things in the future we pray and help us to be gospel people and not first and foremost tradition people, apart from the tradition of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.